Today's topic is about non-epileptic EEG abnormalities. I'm Hong Ling Huang from Ministry of Health and Welfare, Tainan Hospital. The outline includes slow activities, amplitude abnormalities, and the periodic pattern. At first part, we talk about slow activities, which include focal slow and generalized or diffuse slowing. Focal slow activity indicates focal cerebral dysfunction, especially slow activity in delta range, or more persistent slow waves, usually means more severe lesion. One of the examples is polymorphic delta activity. Its abbreviation is PDA. It is characterized by frequency less than 4 Hz, without sustained rhythmicity. The morphology and the voltage are always changing. It was mentioned that the activity is not always mesmal over the lesion. Sometimes, at the area with mesmal involvement, the EEG showed relatively inactivity, flat or smooth PDA. At the region borderline the lesion, the EEG showed higher voltage waves due to less damage to the cortex. PDA usually indicates structural lesion or a subcortical dysfunction. Legions restricted to the cortical do not generally produce significant focal delta activity. They may sometimes produce only focal attenuation of base activities. Let's look at this EEG. It's double banana montage. Left parasagittal, right parasagittal, left lateral and right lateral. We can see there are nearly continuous polymorphic delta activities over right hemisphere. Let's change to A1, A2 montage. And the polymorphic delta activity still existed. So it means that here may be a structural lesion or a subcortical dysfunction. It's a case of GBM, over right hemisphere, status post operation. Then we talk about generalized slowing. It suggests bilateral cerebral dysfunction with a broad spectrum of causes include generalized rhythmic delta activity and generalized asynchronous slow activity or diffuse slowing. GRDA is characterized by repetitive, generalized, monomorphic rhythmic delta ranged waves with duration around 2 to 6 seconds. They can be either frontally or occipitally predominant. Frontally predominant GRDA, also known as FURDA, frontal intermittent rhythmic delta activity. They usually appeared in adults. And occipitally predominant GRDA, also known as ERDA, they are more commonly seen in children. GRDA attenuates with eye opening or esogenous stimuli. And they can be enhanced by hyperventilation and eye closing. FURDA is more non specific. It can be indicative of toxic metabolic encephalopathy process that involves the midline structures, subcortical or cortical structural lesions, or IICP, and other many etiologies. ERDA is more often seen in children with absence epilepsy. It's A1, A2 montage. We can see there are rhythmic delta activities over bilateral hemisphere. So it's an example of GRDA. The delta activities are synchronized, like C waves, may be more synchronized than C waves. However, when we change to the double banana montage, the GRDA are offset. So remember to use at least two montages, better with one reference montage and one bipolar montage, to read the EG. After we change to, to CZ montage, GRDA appear again. It's another patient EEG. We can see there are rhythmic delta activities over bilateral frontal region. So this is FURDA, frontal intermittent rhythmic delta activity, or frontally predominant GRDA. It's a patient, it's a case of hydrocephalus. And FURDA should be differentiated from eye blinking, eye blinking artifact. 
the contour may be sharper, and the field is smaller than the fur down. But most important, we can recognize eye movement by the notation of technologists and the supraorbital and the infraorbital electrodes. Because ocular artifact produce a phase reversal between infraorbital electrode and the supraorbital electrode channels. It's A1, A2 mode touch. In this EEG, we can see rhythmic delta waves over bilateral occipital area. Let's change to double banana mode touch. We can see some sharpish component over the delta activity. Look, the patient is under hyperventilation. After looking down the EEG, the rhythmic delta activity become rhythmic generalized spiking wave complexes. It's a patient with absence epilepsy. The absence epilepsy is provoked by hyperventilation. Then we talk about lateralized rhythmic delta activity, or LRDA. It's most often seen when there is a lesion in the gray matter. It often associated with focal cerebral hyperexcitability. The most classic example is temporal intermittent rhythmic delta activity, turda. It should be considered separately from furda and erda. It highly indicates ipsilateral pathology, and it is closely associated with temporal lobe epilepsy. In this double banana montage EEG, we can see rhythmic delta activities over left frontal temporal region with phase, uh, phase cancellation at F7 to T3 channel. And the rhythmic delta activity become more prominent after we change to average montage and also CZ montage. It's a patient with temporal lobe epilepsy. Then we talk about generalized asynchronous low activity or diffuse slowing. In rose primer of EEG, a posterior dumbbell region less than 8.5 Hz is defined abnormal in adults. When we want to say the EEG has diffuse slowing, we must take into account the age and the condition of the patient. Because when the patient becomes drowsy or when the patient falls asleep, diffuse slowing may appear. Diffuse slowing is highly nonspecific. It usually indicates diffuse encephalopathy. The severity includes mild, which means 7 to 8 Hz, moderate, 4 to 7 Hz, or severe, less than 4 Hz. But the frequency is not always correlate with the severity. The example, one of the example is alpha coma. The EEG consisted of diffuse alpha activity, but the alpha activity is non-reactive. And the patient is in, is in deep coma. It's called alpha coma. In that case, the frequency is not correlate with severity. And this is an example of diffuse slowing. This is another patient's EEG. We can see change in diffuse slowing here. But is this abnormal? We can see the posterior dumbbell region is broken. And there is no obvious eye movement. So the patient may be in drowsy state. After the patient wake up, the eye blink appears and the posterior dumbbell region resumed. So when we want to say the EEG has diffuse slowing, we must take into, the, take into account the patient's condition. 